Paul Feinbaum, ESPN radio host, the Paul Feinbaum Show, the voice of the SEC. Always great to have you back, Paul. Thanks for making time. How bad a loss was that for Tennessee, big picture-wise? It wasn't cataclysmic, Dan, because if Tennessee can get some help, and they've already gotten a lot with Clemson losing, uh, they could be back in this thing pretty quickly. What they need, quite frankly, is, is TCU to lose, which I think a lot of people think is very possible. And, and then it becomes a, a beauty contest. Is it Tennessee? Is it Oregon coming out of, of the West? And you know, Tennessee has a very impressive win right now that we didn't think was all that impressive when they went down to Baton Rouge a couple weeks ago and destroyed LSU. That, that's going to help them a lot. And uh, the LSU-Alabama, I... It's a gutsy call there. I don't know how good Alabama is, and I know you've said this before. Like We're seeing Nick Saban get out coached. That's strong to say for the greatest coach of all time, but why do you believe that? I believe it because uh, I've seen four games this year uh, that have come down to the wire. Uh, Saban's team has won two and lost two. In every one, it was the feeling of me, which is what you're asking here, um, that, it, that, that the other guy did a better job. Uh, he, he's been pretty much a double-digit favorite in all these games. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian, going back to the Texas game, uh, had a masterful plan. So did Jimbo Fisher. Uh, came down to a, a, about a two-yard two play at the end that, that Alabama stopped them, and then Heupel. Uh, really wiped the floors with Saban up in Knoxville a couple weeks ago. And, and Brian Kelly outmaneuvered him as well. And Dan, we both know this is subjective. But I, I think we grade Saban on uh, on a Mount Rushmore type scale. Uh, you know, even when it's a close call, he's going to get the tie. Well, he's getting the loss right now. And you go back to that loss to Florida State by LSU. And people were crushing Brian Kelly and his accent when he, uh, you know, appeared at the basketball game. I, he can have a Cajun accent today. It doesn't matter. It feels like LSU. He, he, he wouldn't beat Alabama if he was at Notre Dame. Being at LSU gives him the chance to beat Alabama. Well, Dan, he has said repeatedly that he left Notre Dame so he could beat Nick Saban. Uh, he took care of that in one shot. And <laughs> and you understand this because you're, you're deep into college football. But to LSU, Nick Saban is everything. He used to coach there. He won a national championship there in 2003. And that's the first time in that stadium in, 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 in at Death Valley that LSU was won since 2010. Uh, that was just a, a, at the, the onset of, of Les Miles' run. Remember him? Oh, yeah. uh, and, and it's really significant. And you know, Brian Kelly uh, got a lot of hate. And not only did he, were people making fun of him because of his accent, Notre Dame people just trashed him, as you know. And it's a, listen, you, you walk away from something like that and you think you have something better in Marcus Freeman. And maybe, maybe Marcus Freeman can lead them to a national championship. He, got, he, he had a pretty significant win Saturday night. But, but Kelly didn't care. At 61, he said, you know what, I'll go make $10 million and get to eat the best Cajun food in the world. You got a situation with Clemson. It's not the same as when they had what, Kelly Bryant and then, you know, you're, you're going to bring Trevor. in Trevor Lawrence because you've got a you know, generational talent. It doesn't feel like DJ is, is that starting quarterback there, but I don't know if the, you know, the freshman behind him is, he's, he's not a generational talent, but I wonder if that's what's holding Clemson back. I, I think a lot of things are holding Clemson back. And again, they could end up the season 11 or 12 and one, and some people would look back at this conversation and think, think I'm crazy. Uh, they know you are. Um, and, uh, but you know, Clemson plays in a, in a, in a league that, that doesn't generate a lot of buzz anymore. So they come, it comes down to usually a one or two game seasons uh, and they lost and they lost badly. And I think, I think Dabo Sweeney has been hurt badly uh, by the way he's handled coordinators. Uh, he, he's lost two really good coordinators uh, to other schools. One, one got fired yesterday, so he may be back soon. Uh, and he lost Brent Venables, who who it was a generational defensive coordinator to go to Oklahoma. Not sure that was a good idea either. Uh, and and he 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 gave guys uh, raises. He he upped them. He 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 hired from within internally. So I, I think that was a questionable call. But that's Dabo Sweeney. And the problem at at, at, at Clemson. Uh, when, when they don't make the playoffs, it's like Alabama. It's considered a, a disastrous season. And I think tomorrow night when 
I, and I know you're waiting eagerly uh, for both the, re- the election results and the CFP reveal, but uh, this will be the first time, I think, uh, in the history of the CFP since 2014 that you don't have Alabama or Clemson in there. More likely to make the playoffs, TCU or Oregon? I think it's TCU if, if you know, because I think that they can, let me use the cliche of the, of the, of the year, uh, control their own destiny. Uh, because if, if TCU wins the Big 12, uh, and, and e- even with one loss, they might have an argument. Oregon's problem uh, is a 46-point loss to Georgia. And I know and the idea that Bo Nix said, well, I think we have a much better game against them now is an understatement. Of course they, of course they would. Uh, that, that was Dan Lanning's first game. Uh, but, you know, think about Georgia. Uh, Georgia has probably the two best wins in the country uh, to, this year against Oregon and against uh, Tennessee Saturday. Uh, so I, I think Oregon has to hope for a lot of things uh, and, and hoping that, that uh, they, they, I don't think they can outdo Tennessee, even though you'll hear the nonsensical uh, chairman of the committee talk on Tuesday night that we value the, uh, that extra value point to the, to the conference championship. I, I don't think winning, uh, e- even this year when the, when the Pac-12 is a little bit better, winning that league is going to uh, help them enough. Could Ohio State and Michigan both make the playoffs? Uh, yeah, uh, probably more likely if Michigan wins, uh, because Ohio State does at least have a non-conference schedule. Michigan doesn't. Although I'm, I'm, I, I was all in on Ohio State, Dan. You're going to have to help me being a, a Big Ten expert, and I'm not. But I'm, some of my friends are starting to warn me off picking Ohio State in that game. Michigan uh, is, is holding up quite well. Well, I think when you saw the Northwestern game and you're like, okay, I know the weather was not great. I just know Ohio State has great players and Northwestern doesn't have great players. So the weather was the same for both teams. It didn't rain when Ohio State was playing offense there. That was a little bit surprising. Paul Feinbaum, the ESPN radio host. Uh, The possibility of San Diego State joining the Pac-12. What do you think? um, How do you see the the reshaping of the Pac-12 if it it is true that USC and UCLA are going to leave? Yeah, and, and I, I don't think we're done yet either. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bad blood between the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Not that that's really going to make anyone care, uh, but but I, I don't, I'm not sure the, the Big 12 is done yet. I think they're going to still make a run at some of those Pac-12 schools. And I don't think the, the Big 10 is done yet either, uh, Dan. And I, I know you're always putting out nuggets, so I, I hate to even even go down in, into your neighborhood here, but I, I feel like they're they're just letting the dust settle, uh, and I still think they've got their eyes on some perhaps more Pac-12 schools. Yeah, I wonder what Oregon does. Yeah, I mean, you look at Oregon and Washington. They're I think they were they're I mean they're natural geographical uh, fit to the to the big to the Big Ten now. I mean, I, I think right now none of that matters. I mean, we used to talk 10, 15 years ago. TV footprint that doesn't matter in in the streaming world and and I, and I think Amazon remains a major player here uh, to to help supplement the Big Ten I, I frankly think the Big Ten will perhaps go after Oregon and Washington before before they're done but I wonder if you're Oregon why not stay in the Pac-12 if you know if you run the schedule there an easier route to play in the playoffs now once we expand to 12 that's a little different but with only four, I would want to stay there. I guess bigger picture, you know, you would go where you could make more money and uh, you're going to get a playoff spot if there's 12. But Dan, we, we are going to, to a 12 sometime as soon as this committee of, 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 of geniuses, you know, stops talking about how difficult it is. It could come as early as 24. Uh, I think it will come no later than 25. So all these moves will, will be uh, super, will be, will supersede that. So, I think you, everyone is just getting set up because once you once we have a 12-team playoff, you can play a Big Ten schedule, an SEC schedule. It doesn't really matter. You can lose two or three games, and you're still factored into the equation. Is North Carolina as good as their uniforms look? Uh, their quarterback is. <laughs> I don't think they are. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm really happy for Mac Brown. I mean, because we were all writing him off last year, saying he was too old, he was 70 years old. But and he has come back with a really nice season here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he'll play in an ACC championship game that will be about as off Broadway as you can get um, against Clemson. And but but it's still North Carolina and. Uh, they have great uniforms in basketball and football. 
And Drake May, from what I'm told, uh, he, you know, by a, a, a source said, teams will tank for Drake May when he becomes eligible. He's that good. I think he is. And, and you think about it, he's getting the most out of uh, out of this season while going back to Alabama for a second. I, I really feel like Brett, Bryce Young has wasted uh, an incredible year. I mean, Bryce Young had a play in the uh, LSU game that would have been a Heisman moment if his defense could stop anyone. Uh, but and he, and he had the same plays in, in the Tennessee game. I, I mean, he is playing as good as he did last year, including the sprained shoulder. But yeah. we're already writing him off because of the he's got a, a leaky defense. Always great to talk to you. Uh, which fan base do you think will be the angriest or saddest today on your show? Um, I'm, I'm betting everything on Alabama fans today. Uh, there's nothing, there, there's nothing like a meltdown after the first Alabama loss, but the second Alabama loss, uh, it's as close to Armageddon as you can get. That's good. Thank you, Paul. Always great to talk to you. Thank you, Dan. That's Paul Feinbaum, ESPN radio host, host of the Paul Feinbaum show and the voice of the SEC.